Hey, good morning. Well, I've got up at 2 o'clock again, and um, now it's probably about 8.30 in the morning, and I've been up praying and seeking the Lord and crying and doing how we do. And so, anyway, um, remember I told y'all that the Lord gave me a dream and that he was, uh, it was, uh, the sign of the Son of Man coming, and he he was going through the earth, and he was walking. This was on the 18th. He was walking, and then he left out of the crowd, cloud of witness, and he stepped out, and he uh, looked at me, and he smiled, and then he came and he hugged me, and he said, "I will return and strengthen thee." And um, so, um, for some reason, I've been um, having this urgency in me uh to uh be clothed in white and to be ready and uh to strengthen that which remains and i keep feeling like something is ready to die i don't know how to explain it like you know we're the dead in christ he said the dead in christ are going to rise first like and 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 so all those that are crucified in christ jesus they have died unto their self and, and I don't know how to explain this. This is spiritually discerned. But anyway, I just dedicate this video into the Lord. And for all of you who are seeking Christ. And all of you who uh, believe on Him. And who love Him. He's given me this. Because He's saying He's getting ready to make. Uh, to come upon us like a thief. And, and that we've got to be ready. Like He's coming to visit with us. So I, I want to read this, okay? Um, this, we're in Revelation chapter 3 and 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 unto the angel of the church of Sardis right these things saith he that have the seven spirits of God and the seven stars and if I'm not mistaken at the beginning of the chapter it tells who the seven stars are let's see the seven stars are are the angels or the messengers over the seven churches and the seven spirits uh, they stand before God's throne and you can find that in verse 5 6 it says and I beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God that are sent out forth into all the earth. So we are in the days to where Jesus is supposed to make visitation with his children and those that have been waiting upon him i'm not talking about the ones that are waiting to fly away that is a different doctrine that is a different time that is not what's going on right now there are many that thinking that is what is going to be happening i think perry stone teaches that and i would say 85 percent of the church teach that we're going to fly away and uh, but what the way the Lord has taught me is that He's going to prepare us, and He's going to to receive His glory, and then we're going to go forth through the earth and do the great harvest of souls. And then um, when we get done, and then the trump, the, the the last trumpet, the seven trumpet sounds, then we shall be caught up. All right. So that what He's saying now is He's co coming. And the sign of the Son of Man, uh, Matthew 24. We can go and read that really quick because that's where we're at. Um, what he's showing me, let's see. Um, I should have already had that ready, but I didn't know he was going to take me there. So we're just letting the Holy Spirit right now. I just consecrate this video unto the Lord Jesus Christ for his kingdom and for his lambs and sheep, for the righteous and for the holy. And uh, for those that are the unclean and the filthy, the Lord says, repent. And he says that you have eyes, but you see not. You have ears, but you hear not. But if you'll repent of your idols, then you would be able to hear. Then you would be able to see. And so, um, we don't. We are not casting the uh, our pearls before swine here today. And uh, we are not uh, given what is holy 
uh, to uh, the dogs, but the dogs, y'all can eat the crumbs from the table. And then you'll know if you are a dog or swine because you'll know because you're not right in the Lord. And you'll know that you're not right. And the reason we know that, uh, and I think it's the book of Romans. Let's go to that real quick first. Romans chapter might be Hebrews. It's either Hebrews or Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 19. Okay. We'll do 18 too. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. So, they know. A person that is filthy and or unclean, they know they are. Okay? And those that are righteous and those that are holy, they know they are. So, um, but this video is for all those that are coming out of Great Tribulation that are repenting, that are washing their garments, making them white in the blood of the Lamb for the righteous and for the holy. And um, it is not for the wicked and those sinners that won't repent. Because y'all can't hear, you can't see. And every time I release the holy word of the Lord, I have people that come back and try to rend the prophet for releasing the holiness of the Lord. And so, we just make it plain today that this is not, if you are not righteous and you're not holy, this is, the video is not for you. You're on the wrong channel, okay? This channel is for the remnant. And with that said, we just dedicate this video to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so now we're in Matthew 24, and we're going to go to the timing that we're in. And we're in the timing where... Um, the sign of the Son of Man. Okay, so September 23rd of 2017, the sign of the Son of Man was seen in the heavens to where the constellations lined up and um, the woman gave birth. Uh, the Jupiter and Virgo came together and, and they had a baby. <laughs> and uh, nine months later, which would have been in 2018, that baby was birthed. Uh, and that's the man-child company. Those, that's those that are being made into the image of Christ Jesus. It's for those in the church that are being clothed in white, that are being changed. They're dying to their self. They're being made like Christ. They're going through the regeneration process. All right? So, um, so we're fist to go into a time of great darkness. And I believe the darkness has already started. We just didn't know it. Well, I knew it because it was swirling. I could see it and it would try to come in my house. And the Lord was standing in my home and he said, You uh, cast that darkness out of this realm. And I rose up and I said, I cast that darkness out of this realm. And I saw it go out of a portal. So we are in the time to where the darkness, and it, the darkness has been um, overspreading the earth now for at least one whole year that I know of, it may have been more like three years, but it's really been overspreading really uh, terribly, and in that darkness is the curse that operates, it's the curse of sin and darkness, and it is operating, in, and so in the book of Matthew, it says immediately after the tribulation of those days, of what days? Uh, you can go back and read it. There were all kind of different tribulations that were happening. And we're thinking this has not been going on, but I'm telling you right now, the Lord told me we have been in tribulation now since 2001. That's what he gave me, a 24 and a half year prophecy uh, that the tribulation that would lead up to the great tribulation would last for 24 and a half years. We have been in tribulation ever since the tw Twin Towers was taken out ever since they fell hold on just for one minute i've been praying a lot this morning and praying in tongues and i'm having to drink a little bit of fluid
when you pray a whole whole lot your living waters will kind of need to you know they'll kind of start drying just a little bit because you're praying so much so anyway he'd give me that prophecy that in 2001 uh, and it was the prophecy of the I think uh, was it the book of Daniel Lord okay so time was counted okay so time was always counted a week is called a jubilee and a week is called a time and uh, seven years is called a time and Enoch and you have to go back to the way they counted time in the beginning that God counted it by weeks not in um, like the preachers say a time is one year that's wrong a time uh there's only one place to where a time is one year. And I can't remember where that is right now because I'm not talking about that right now. But I'm talking about what Jesus Christ had told me that um, from 2001 when the Twin Towers fell, he said, count time, times, and half a time. And he said, and you count time is seven years. Times... 14 is 14 years and a half a time is three and a half years and I said okay Lord so I counted that and I believe it comes up it's 24 and a half years so it comes to your 25 I think okay so um and why am I telling y'all that because by the year of 2025 I believe that's when that Antichrist is going to rise. I can't remember what happens at the end of the 24 and a half years. I think. And he told me when I count that, that you have to count 2001. You don't start your count at 2002, so it may be 24 and a half years. You count 2001. Because they actually planned the fall of the Twin Towers the year before they did it. And it was an inside job. And they actually were in a coalition with an enemy. And they were an enemy from within. There's always been an enemy from within in our nation. Uh, and... Well, we know Satan is an enemy, but you start and you count from 2001 on. So I think a 24 and a half would actually have landed us if you count from 2001. Since they, when they, uh, see when you sin, the sin goes into effect on the day that you think it up. It doesn't actually go into effect on the day you commit the sin. The sin goes into effect on the day that you conjured it up in your head, and then it went into your heart. And though you wait a year to perform the sin, you've already made the plans of the sin. And so in heaven, they write it down at the time that you... Uh, it's like what Jesus said, if you think on a woman and lust after her, you've already committed sin in your heart. So it's on the time that you think of the sin is written in heaven in your book. And in the annals in heaven, they write it. And so he says that they sin at a year before 911, before the Twin Towers were taken out, that they concocted that and they planned it a year early. So you have to start counting from the year of 2001 is the first year. So 2001 is the first year. So you count all the way up. So 2024 is the year, is the 24 and a half years fulfilled. And it was fulfilled, if I'm not mistaken, it was fulfilled in the spring. Um, yeah, because God counts the calendar from October to October is the biblical calendar with the Lord. And um, he doesn't count from January to December, like how we do. That's a Gregorian calendar. That's like some new age calendar. He doesn't go by that. He goes by the ancient old calendar that Enoch used. 
And we're in the time right now of the trumpets according to Enoch. So really, I think we're supposed to be going by the, uh, I said go by the biblical calendar. And I told y'all that a month ago, we we're going by the biblical calendar. Well, I didn't even know what that meant. But now I'm knowing it's the biblical calendar according to Enoch. <laughs> According to the Father, according to the Lord. Okay, so um, so tribulation has been going. Tribulation has been going now for 24 and a half years. And we are two weeks away from it being 25 years. On about October, I would think it's going to be around October the 12th to the 17th, somewhere in there. We start the year of 2025 and got uh, on God's calendar. So the 24 and a half years has already been fulfilled. It was fulfilled several months ago. So we've actually began that next phase of where great tribulation is starting. Not just tribulation, but great tribulation. And where did it ever say great tribulation in the last seven years? It does not say that. Find a scripture and look that up. Seek it out. And then send that to me. There's nowhere it says great tribulation in the last seven years. That is what people concocted and told us that. But there's nowhere it says that actually the great tribulation is going to last longer than seven years. Okay, we already know it is because Daniel, the angel, told Daniel. Daniel asked him. He said, "How long is all this thing going to happen? How long is it going to be when that Antichrist sits, saying he is God, and they take away the daily sacrifice and the abominations that makes desolate is set up, and he's sitting on the throne saying, he's, how long is that going to be?" And that angel said, "It's going to be twenty-three hundred days." Well, they, God in God's heaven, they count a year as 360 days, not 365. But, but then the angel told him, he said it's going to be, no, he said it's going to be not 2,300 days. It's going to be 1,290 days from this, the, for the last part of the Great Tribulation. He didn't show him the whole Great Tribulation. He just showed him the last part. It's going to be 1,290 days. That's three and a half years just for the last part. He said, but pray and blessed is he. Well, he didn't say pray. He said, blessed is he that uh, stays to the 1,335th day. So that last three and a half years is not even the end of the world. There's 13, it goes from 1,290 days. They have he said, blessed is he that stays until the 1335th day. That means that from the 1290, that last um, three and a half years, where Satan is ruling and reigning and doing all that, he only gets to rule and reign. And we know for a fact he only gets to rule and reign three and a half years. Okay, we do know that. That one's true. Okay, so that's what they're talking about. He said, when is all this going to take place? When is this indignation where that, where he's going to, where the creature's going to be ruling? I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> and the angel told him, he said, it'll, it'll be from the time he sits to take away the daily sacrifice, it's, it's going to be 12, 1290 days. But then the angel said, but, but blessed is he that make it to the 1335th day. So from the, that's another, what is that? 45 days. There's another month and a, and a half on the earth after the Antichrist is taken out. After Jesus Christ is going to come on that horse and he's going to destroy the people with the brightness of his coming and the sword of his mouth. And they're going to, Michael's going to catch that devil and wrap him in a chain and put him in that pit. All that's going to be taking place. And God is going to take his sword. And he's going to cut down the remnant. Going to kill all them. The birds of the air is going to fill their flat, their bellies with the, <clears throat> the flesh of men. And then. Uh, it says he's going to give rewards unto his saints. They're going to be sitting on. He's going to give to them. This is what it says. 
uh, thrones and appoint them thrones and they will sit on thrones so and then we're going we enter into that millennial kingdom it's going to take 45 days from the time Christ comes back with his sword destroying the earth I mean destroying the wicked and locking Satan up and pulling that dragon down that beast and judging all the nations it said he's he's going to they're going to throw the false prophet into the fire they're going to kill the the remnant those that had rised up and were there at Armageddon to try to go against the Lord it's going to take 45 days for all that to take place so Daniel told him, he said it's going to be 1,290 days from the time that the abomination of desolation takes place. That's when Satan sits on the throne saying he's God over there in Israel. I guess it's where he's going to be sitting. He's going to be sitting either there or in Shinar where the Tower of Babel was, where the den of the leopards is, because he's got a place over there too where Nimrod built that Tower of Babel, see, that's an altar of Satan in the earth that's always been, and it probably will always be. Um, but he's going to try to take uh, Jerusalem because he wants to sit as God in the holy city because he knows Jesus Christ is going to sit as God over there in the millennial kingdom. So he wants to counterfeit, and he wants to have his behind sitting in that seat, at least if he can sit in it for three and a half years to pretend like he's... Jesus to pretend like he's God that's what he's going to try to do and a lot of people are going to believe it they're going to go over there to see him and stuff that's the reason Jesus Christ said when you hear rumors about he's in the field or he's in a, a chamber or he's here do not go Jesus Christ said he's going to come to where you are you do not go out to see him now you can go to church if you want to and you can be around other saints but if they're saying Jesus is at that church you're not supposed to run and go there you know that right Okay, so I, I know I talk about a lot of different things, but um, there's a reason for it. It'll help you uh, later. But So right now, we've been going through what Daniel talked with that angel about. Um, no, we have not hit that yet. We're going through the part that Jesus told me about of uh, when the Twin Towers fell. He said that's when tribulation was going to start. And... Um, really you can actually count back even farther because until the apostasy of sin is full the last generation that uh, falling away happens and it can take 70 years so from the time israel was a nation 2018 was 70 years and that was just we were getting to the to the completion of the apostasy of sin and we're still not to the complete fullness of the falling away there are still some that are going to fall even further hey did you know that when a person goes to hell that they continue to descend forever they continue to fall they fall and fall and fall they never quit falling they keep descending i, I just recently in the last like six months i have learned that just through uh, meditation prayer with god and the holy spirit dealing with me and um and then two, I looked at a few of those videos to where people had um, had died, and they went to hell. And then God gave them another chance, and He brought them back up. And you know, He actually, I got to see that too when I died because I died, and He brought me back up from death, and um, He gave me another chance. And so I did get to see some of that stuff in hell. But in if a person, um, if they reject Christ when they go to hell all their sins remain on them because their sins were not washed away by Jesus' blood and that's why Jesus said where their worm dieth not because their sins remain on them and Satan is that creature that sits at our lays at our door like an old dog he lays at the door of our heart or the door of our head he's waiting for us to sin and when we open up or willingly sin he comes on into our soul and he starts setting up and wreaking havoc and stuff like that and um but when people uh they don't give their life to jesus their sins are not washed away so when they perish their portal opens the portal that everybody has a door in them i call it a portal because that's what the lord calls it to me um everybody has that portal that little door in them and whatever they feed 
is what the door portal opens to. So if you, that's why Jesus said, and the word actually says this, um, think on everything that is lovely, everything that is beautiful, everything that is of a good report. On these things meditate. Meditate on the things that are around God's throne. Do not meditate on the things that are of the earth. For the things that are getting ready to perish. Do not think on those things. But think on everything that is good. Everything that is lovely. Because whatsoever we meditate. Whatsoever we think on. That's what we open our little door to. Our portal. And right now the Lord is calling us all to come. And right now he's wanting me to tell y'all today. That he's getting ready to make visitation with us. He's coming out to see. And their fist to search each one of us with that lamp with that light the lamp the light is the menorah it is the spirit of the lord their fist to come and jesus is coming with the spirit they're the two witnesses together the living word jesus christ and the spirit of the lord with the seven spirits those are the two witnesses and he's coming to visit with us okay and he's coming and he's saying to get ready and to because he's going to come like a thief and um he's going to leave us a blessing when he comes all through the word it says that he's going to leave us a blessing so we are in the timing now uh and two he wants me to say this too they fall through that portal when they pass away and they were not saved and their sins were ever with them they were not washed away the portal opens and they can only go to the place that is prepared for them that they help prepare their self because that when you reject the Lord then the portal that works with you is the portal that Satan rules over like with like with Cain how his portal opened up and, and, and Satan came in and God, God walked over there and he saw he said how's your, how's your countenance fallen countenance means your glory how did the glory of God drop off of you and he was wroth wrathful that means vengeful, anger, full of murder and malice. And the Lord said, why are you like this? And God tried to talk to Cain and told him, don't do what is wrong, but do what is right and you'll be accepted. But he did not do what is right. He actually went out and talked with his brother and talked all that mess up, even worse. And then he slew and he rose up and killed his brother. And so that's what people do. They conjure up these things. And that's what they did when the Twin Towers fell in, in 2001. They actually conjured that up a year before. They came up with it. And that's when their sin was accredited to them. It's the hour that they came up with it. And so we have to count from then. He said that's when the tribulation of the Antichrist, the, the tribulation was magnified. And uh, you can call it great tribulation, but it is tribulation. Really, the truth, the great tribulation is that really that last portion that that angel told Daniel that it would be that 1,290 days it's going to last. And Satan's going to rule during that time for 1,290 days. And um, but blessed is he that makes it to the 1335th day blessed is he that makes it that extra 45 days and we will if you make it to the time they grab satan with that chain and throw him in that pit you're going to make it to that 40, 1335th day you're going to make it that extra 45 days and uh, there's going to be i mean the lord is going to be giving out rewards like crazy he's going to be setting uh people on thrones he's going to He's going to set his tabernacle up in Jerusalem. It, it, he's going to heal the earth. He's going to restore the earth. There's going to be people coming out of dens and caves everywhere that were hiding down in, under the earth. There are, because you can read after we were on the... We're going to all go to the holy city. We're not going to just live where we live now. That does say that there will be some that will live out in the earth. and But every year they have to make their way to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can read about that in the Millennial Kingdom in Ezekiel, I think it's 47, 48, uh, 49. You can read about the Millennial Kingdom. But they're going to make their way every year during the fall holy days. That's what we're in now. Uh, trumpets, tabernacles, and atonement. They're going to make their way to the holy city every year to pay homage to Jesus Christ. And it says in the Bible, for those that will not make the journey that he will not send rain on their crops. 
And, and, and if they still won't come, then the curse will cleave into them. So even during the millennial kingdom, and we we are going to be living in the in the holy uh, city over there. We're going to be because when Satan is loosed out of that pit after a thousand years, he goes out onto the breadth of the earth to gather up all those uh, people that were the seed of the children that were that were left that were not destroyed by the sword and he's going to go gather up all those people of the earth and it said they're going to be as the sand of the sea in just 1,000 years they're going to be as the sand of the sea that's how God's going to be multiplying them so much they're going to be having so many children in the millennial kingdom it's crazy so if somebody tells you oh you're not going to have any children in the millennial kingdom that is not true the Lord has told me for those of you who go in with your body he's going to restore you to where you're like 20 something years old even if you're a 95 year old lady you're going to be like 20 years old when you go into the millennial kingdom if, if you were married to a priest before and your husband passed away while you were on the earth then you can marry a, a priest again you can read about that go in the bible and read the story all the stuff about the millennial kingdom okay it would do you good to read all that stuff because then you would know what to look forward to um and many people are going to have two tracts of land. Some people are going to have a countryside estate. And some people are going to be in the priesthood. And they're going to have a chamber in the ca the castle there. In the in the inner court where Jesus uh, and all the priests are. Okay? That's what he showed me. He showed me that. So anyway, um, we'll keep talking about these things that I'm telling y'all about. So y'all know what's going on. But for right now... Um, He's saying, For wherefore if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, do not go forth. Or if he's in the secret chamber, they say, Believe it not, he said. For as lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. be. So we're, when he comes back, we're going to see him come. Okay? But there is a secret coming. This is what all the churches have always taught, that R-A-P-T-U-R-E. They said they were going to fly away, but that is not what's going to happen. But what is going to happen, there is a secret coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's called a visitation. And he says that wherever the dead in Christ are, those are those that have died unto their self, they're alive in Christ. But they're called the dead in Christ. They've died into their self. He said, wherever they are, that's where the angels are going to be gathering. And you can read that. For wheresoever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered. That's what that means. They're the dead in Christ. They're the man-child coming. They've died into their self. They give everything up for the kingdom of God. You remember where Jesus said, um, for I tell you the truth, that he that forsakes wife, uh, mother, father, brother, sister, siblings, houses, lands, for my sake and for the kingdom, I will give you a hundredfold in this lifetime and in the next eternal life. So many are giving up everything to follow Jesus Christ. And you need to be praying that prayer. I heard him ask me earlier. I was in here crying and praying, asking for certain things. And he said, are you willing to give up everything for me? And I had to answer. I said, yes, Lord, yes. I give everything for you. Everything. So that's what he's wanting. If you want the masteries of the kingdom, and you're wanting Jesus Christ to come and meet with you over these fall holy days, then you need to tell him. And you need to repent of anything that you think that you might need to repent of. And I'm going to show you all something that he did tell us that we need to repent of. But I'm going to give that to you all in just a minute. All right, so now we, and see, everything that I'm tell, talking to y'all about, I didn't know I was going to talk about any of these things. Um, the Lord was dealing with me on not making the scripted things anymore to just go by the Holy Ghost, and that he was going to give y'all stuff through the Spirit of the Living God and through the Word, and he would take me to the Word like how we're doing now, and that's what we're doing. So we've been going through tribulation. I want y'all to understand it. A time is seven years. And uh, he said to count from the time they uh, sinned and came up with the Twin Towers fiasco. He said that is when the tribulation started with uh, 
here is for the whole world, but America is the standard. Uh, Jerusalem, Israel, the Jewish people are not the standard for the whole world anymore because they did not receive Jesus as Messiah, but the Gentiles actually are the standard for the whole world because they actually received Gen uh, Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And uh, so uh, we are still the seed of Abraham because we're part Jew. All of us have a little bit of Jewish DNA in us, whether if you know it or not. We're from Adam. We're from Abraham. We're from Noah. We have a little bit of the DNA in us. So, but anyway, all those that are saved, they are engrafted in. So, counting from the year before the Twin Towers fell, um, is when they made their sin. You counted up 24 and a half years as you're going to land in 2024. In the, about the spring, about March uh, the 11th or uh, March the 10th of 2024 and that has been all those years has been tribulation and he says immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the sun here means the church and the moon is Israel the, the Jewish nation it does not mean the sun in the sky and it is not but I'll tell you the truth. Did y'all know that we only get one sixth part of light compared to how God created the earth? When God created the earth, He shined the light in the darkness and He divided the light from the dark and He called the evening and the morning the first day and so thereforth. And then He created it in six, for six days and on the seventh day He rested. But um, since the fall, we only get one sixth. And y'all can look that up online. There's even scientists that have done studies on this. We only get one-sixth of the light that we were supposed to get. Can you imagine that if we got uh, more? So we get one-sixth. Do you know there's a scripture written in this Bible to where the sun will become seven times brighter? wonder why they say that. We get one-sixth. So... The, the sun would have been about seven times brighter. But anyway, he said the after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. And truly, the sun is darker than what it was. We just don't understand it. Okay? Uh, it's the veil, I think. There's something that blocks, um, I don't know. And the moon shall not give her light. But really, it's truly meaning the church... Uh, the sun always represents the church and the moon always represents Israel and the stars sh shall fall from heaven now those stars remember how those fallen ones fell when Satan he tricked every all the angels and they fell from heaven well those are stars those are angels but there's also other stars that are Abraham's children like us we are the superstars of God we are the seed promised we are stars we're also messengers of God one day we will be as the angels and there are many that are already earth angels to where God had raised them from the dead and they no longer have to go through the judgment anymore for their life is eternal now because they've already went through the judgment once it's appointed for a man to die once and then the judgment so I can attest to that one I've already died once and went through the judgment I'm not going to have to go through the judgment again he judges me all day long every day everything I do is put to the word of God under the sword and um, he uh, purges me as though through fire every single day and so but anyway so the stars shall fall from heaven and um, that is actually not the constellations in the sky uh, so this is spiritually discerned and these stars that are going to fall are going to be two kinds it's going to be the fallen angels or if it's to come down into us i don't know where they are right now vicky parnell says that they live like on mars on the dark side of the moon uh they live on saturn uh, they live down in the ocean. I don't know where they are, but I know that they're going to come down into us. Um, and those are the fallen angels, okay? Not the demonia. Demons are different. Well, they are. I've seen a fallen angel transform into a demon, and Satan is actually a grotesque reptilian demon. So, yes, they're demons. But the giants, the disembodied, uh, they're, they didn't have a soul. Giants don't have a soul. 
uh, they're with disembodied spirits. They actually are demons too, but they're evil spirits actually. I think it's a little bit different. Anyway, um, so uh, the stars shall fall from heaven. And uh, that's both stars. That's the fallen angels and it's Abraham's children. Many of them are fallen. Hadn't y'all been seeing them fallen? Like, T.D. Jakes fell. Chris Reed fell. Uh, 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 T Tony Evans fall. Like, those, are, those are the stars. They are the superstars of God. They were supposed to shine, shine bright like a star. God told Abraham, look at the stars. If you can name them for very name, I will give them to you as your descendants. That's what God said. All right, so the stars shall fall. Now, when all this happens, it says the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now, every day when I wake up now and I look, I can see through the veil. The veil looks like a big honeycomb, and it is metallic looking. And the veil is so thin now that I can see stuff coming through the veil. And I can see, like stuff from uh, here where I live it's not wicked things coming through because I have a, my portals are open to heaven and the angels are ascending and descending but what I see is I see like beautiful flowers floating in and like beautiful big butterflies and like all kind of things from heaven and I'm seeing all these beautiful things like one day I saw some wallpaper I could see into like my mansion in heaven and oh my gosh the Lord had the most beautiful wallpaper like in where I guess it was like in a, a dining room or it was a icy pink color like a really icy pink it had like white uh, glittery frosty stuff on it and it was it was uh, and it had like silver in with it and it was a leopard print but it was real icy pink and you talking about beautiful oh my gosh it had a little bit of maybe like a baby blue swirled in with it very lightly like the the animal print part and the background was like ice pink it had that silver and that like snow look to it it was ab it looked like it it was made with real stones and like pearls. It had like a pearl effervescence over it. It was absolutely gorgeous. And I'm like, oh my God. He said, this is the wallpaper in your mansion. I'm like, whoo. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't even, they don't have anything like that on earth. That is absolutely beautiful. I lay there and looked at that. So I see stuff every day now because the veil is very thin and soon the powers of heaven. We're right here at the time in these fall holy days. Every every seven years, we're at a seven year. We're in the year of Jubilee. It is a seven year cycle. And every seventh year, the triple portals open in the fall holy days. He showed it to me back in 2000. I think it would be 2017 or 2018. So 18, 19, 20. Yeah, it was in 18. Okay. So he showed me and I saw the portals open up and um one is like a garden gate and the one in the middle it swirls counterclockwise and it looks like fire and then the one on the left is just like a door and um i also could see the horns on the altar the brazen altar uh, but anyway so the powers of heaven are, are being shaken right here in uh, verse 29 and when the powers of heaven are shaken it won't be too long after that the veil is going to be removed and everybody's going to be able to see in the spirit so we're getting really close to where i've been seeing in the spirit for years and now it's getting got so intense that i really see stuff all the time but the these powers of heaven are going to be shaken and um and we're right where that is right now and he says and then and then verse, verse 30 then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven well, the sign of the Son of Man, we saw that in heaven. He said he shall appear in heaven. We saw that in heaven. Uh, Revelation 12 sign. And, and so that took place in 2017. It said, and then the tribes of the earth shall mourn. Have the tribes of the earth not been mourning? Yes, we've been in mourning what did we do during COVID? We mourned and cried. There wasn't a person on the planet that could cure that COVID. 
You couldn't go in a hospital and drive that out of nobody. There wasn't anybody like Jesus on the planet. I don't know one person that was like Jesus on the planet. People were mourning left and right. Their family members was dying every week. They wouldn't even let us in the hospital to see them uh, die. Like we couldn't even tell them bye. We don't know what they did with their body. They could have took their bodies and let, uh, you know, when Satan railed against uh, Michael or Gabriel, I think it was Michael, he wanted the body of Moses. When Moses passed away, Satan went to go get his body, and, and uh, Michael rebuked him. He said, the Lord rebuked thee. Why was Satan wanting to take Moses' body? He was wanting to put one of them demons in that body. They do that over in Africa. It's called zombieism. They they take a, a witch doctor does some kind of spell and he, he when a person dies and they put a spirit in that person and then that person gets up and they walk but their eyes are whited over. They look like they got cataracts and um, they walk around and they live but they got a spirit living in them. They're never the same. It's crazy. They're doing that zombieism stuff. I had never even heard of that stuff. I don't know why I'm talking to y'all about this, but um, anyway, I got sidetracked. <laughs> um, so the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. Well, the clouds is the cloud of witness. It says, uh, and he will come with power and great glory. Okay, so... And I know this is what where we're at right now because when when I saw Jesus Christ on the 18th, and He was coming, He was in the cloud of witness, and I saw Him coming, and it looked like I could just see like a parade coming, and it came from the sky, and it came like that, and then when He got into view, and I could see it was the cloud of witness for all those that have went on to be with the Lord, the cloud of witness, all those. And they were coming from heaven in the clouds, but it was him, and he started walking by. And then I saw it was him. And that scripture came to me when that happened. So this right here is taking place right now. And guess what's supposed to happen? The whole earth is supposed to see the sign of the Son of Man. He is going to be on the walking on the cloud of witness, and he's going to be walking through the earth. And we are going to see Jesus through the people, through those that are like him, through the superstars. He told me he's getting ready to come and make visitation with us. And he is going to empower us to do the same works as him. And we're going to shine like the brightness of the firmament. And we're going to go forth. He's pouring his glory in us. And we're going to go forth and do his works. And he's going to be in our midst. He's going to lead us to fountains of living waters. He said the sun is not even going to smite us anymore. And while all this is going on, um, we are going to walk like this for a very long time. It's, it's, this is not going to be something that just lasts for a day. This is going to last for six years, he told me, to where we are going to be uh, have the glory of God on us. And for six years, but he said during that same time that the enemy and his dark kingdom is going to rise. And, and then they're going to rise up real greatly. You know, he's going to come in and overspread through a false peace. But, and then after those, uh, it's going to take about six years for Jesus to take the harvest in and to do all the things he wants to do. And then after that, then the seventh trump is going to blow. Um, he's going to send his angels out with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will go out and they're going to gather up his elect from the four winds of heaven. So, anyway, that, we're, we're not nowhere near the trumpet yet. We got a little bit more time. But, um, now, I'm going to go back to what he wanted me to give y'all today. And this is what he's saying. Alright. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou are living, but you are dead. See, they're alive, but they're dead. They're crucified in Christ. These are the ones he's coming to visit right now. You're dead in Christ, you're alive in Christ. Um, I don't know how to explain this, but you 
am. I know that you have a name, that you are alive, but yet you are dead. Be watchful. And he wants you to do this. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. That's what I've been feeling like. That something was just dying. I keep feeling like I'm like, Lord, I feel like I'm dying. And I feel like that everything around me is dying. Like, what is going on? He gave me the scripture. He's telling me that we're the dead in Christ. And that things around us are getting ready to die. But he said, be watchful. That means watching for him and strengthen what remains that is ready to die. But we got a lot of things that are ready to die right now. He said, For I have not found your works perfect before God. Even these are for the 144,000 too. And those that are clothed in white. He has not found their works perfect. You know why? None of us have been seeking Him like we should. And none of us are made perfect yet. But He's getting ready to help us. He says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and how thou hast heard and hold fast. Hold fast. That means to be a fasted life. Live a fasted life. Hold fast and repent. And I've been doing that. I've been repenting. I've been turning away from my own ways and I've been turning to the Lord and I've been letting Him just tell me whatever He wants to say. And I'm just believing Him as He's given it to me. I'm not going to try to be politically right. I'm not going to try to teach what the churches have taught i'm going to teach what jesus christ says for me to say i'm going to do what he says he said so remember therefore how you have received and how you have heard and hold fast that means hold a fast of life and repent if therefore you will not watch i will come on you as a thief and you will not know what hour I will come. We're in the hour right now that he's getting ready to come upon us. It's a visitation though. It's not a taking away. It's a visitation. Now, I, I can't say for sure he's not going to take you. He might take some of y'all. He might say, you know, your work is done here. Or he might let you choose when he comes to visit with you. What if he asks you, would you like to go ahead and go home? Or would you like to stay here to the end of the harvest? What would you say? You better be getting your head screwed on straight so when he comes you'll know what to say um you'll get a greater reward if you stay and you'll complete your destiny if you stay but if you go you'll inherit eternal life but you may have to go to school when you get to heaven and you may not ascend as quickly as the others do because you know you didn't complete the full destiny that god had for you so i know some people he's given them opportunity to leave and they they left, and then some of them made the right choice, and they said, no, I, I'll stay because I want to complete my destiny. So he does do that sometimes when he visits a person. And Jesus is making visitation all over the world. There's so many people that he's been visiting. You know, just like he visited me in, 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 in that night vision. I don't even know if it was a dream or if I was there in the spirit or if he caught me up. Like, I don't know. I don't know. But I felt like I'd been somewhere because my body felt uh, different after it was over with. I felt like I'd went through some kind of an event. When you go in the spirit like that, you can feel it in your body the next day. It kind of wreaks havoc a little bit on your body when you travel in the spirit. But anyway, and I felt like that. Um, he says, you have a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. You know how he says, he writes, uh, our name he gives us a new name on a white stone and um that's what i thought of when i read that it said and you you have a few names even in sardis which have which have not defiled their garments and i'm like how many names do we have lord do you know how many names he's given us you can read about some of the names okay so he gave us a new name written on a white stone he gave us a new name of his father's name written in our forehead he gave us a new name of the new jerusalem written in our forehead so we have more than just our name you know how jesus has many names mighty wonderful counselor almighty god emmanuel god with us yeshua hamashiach jesus the uh, king of king lord of lords the great i am the first the last. you know how he's got many names he says that we are known by many names 
And I said, well, what are some of the names that I have? He said, start just naming out my attributes. I said, okay, Great Hope. Do I, is one of my names Great Hope? And he said, do you want it to be? I was like, yes, I want to be called that I was a lady that had great hope, great faith, great love. I want it all to be great this and great that. And he said, okay, noted. So, but he says that we have a few names. The name on the white stone, the name of God in our forehead, the name of the new Jerusalem written in our forehead, the name of the new city of God. I can't remember all the new names that he's given us, but this Sardis, and these are the dead in Christ, this Sardis, uh, and I'm not talking about the dead in Christ that are in cat, their bodies in a casket, and they've already died and went home to be with the Lord. I'm not talking about them. There's two deads in Christ, okay? I need to make things clear. There's the dead in Christ that have already went home to be with the Lord, and they're no longer in the grave. Uh, their spirit and soul is with the Lord, but their body's in the grave. There's Those are the dead in Christ, but the dead in Christ that are crucified in Christ Jesus, okay? Um, that's the ones I'm talking about, okay? So he says, uh, you have a few names in stars which have not defiled their garments. So we don't just have one wedding gown like what people are saying. We have garments. We have, and I know for a fact we do because I've seen them. We have a gown of salvation. Everybody that gets to go to the millennial kingdom or to heaven, they have a gown of salvation. Also here, we have a gown of salvation. We have a robe of Jesus' righteousness. We have garments of praise. We have a wedding gown. We have a suit of armor. We have a tunic of the a girdle curious girdle of the prophet we have the ephod that goes over us we also have a coat of many colors and you can have a fur coat and there is cl uh, cloaks that god will uh, drop down from heaven and he will cloak you with his majesty he will cloak you with uh let's say uh, a cloak of prayer intercessory like a garment of prayer intercessory he so he says for there uh you have a few names that have not been defiled and you uh you have not defiled your garments that you have a few names which have not defiled their garments okay and you will walk with me in white for your worthy so for those that have the names, the stone, the white stone, the Father's name, is they're sealed in their forehead, written in their forehead. They've got the name of the New Jerusalem on their forehead. And they have their garments, their gown of salvation, their robe of righteousness. They have on the armor of God. They have on garments of praise. For these, and their clothes are white. They don't have spots and sins, and their clothes are not wrinkled up because they don't just sit idle. When you sit somewhere idle, just sitting, your garments get wrinkled. But if you stand and walk and move, your garments won't get wrinkled. So they, they have, uh, they shall walk with me in white. He says, for they are worthy. He that overcomes, the same will be clothed in white raiment. So we need to be praying that, Lord, help us to be overcomers. That's how you get your white raiment. You get it through being an overcomer. He that overcomes, he will be the same one will be clothed in white coverings, white clothing. And I will not blot his name out of the book of life. See, these are truly the dead. These are dead men walking. They are the dead in Christ. So the enemy does counterfeits, trying to take a, a dead body like how Moses died and and, and, and the devil wanted his body to put a spirit in it or whatever. Why would he want in his body? Like, that's crazy. That zombie stuff. They do that stuff. But we uh, truly have been crucified in Christ Jesus. We are dead in Christ. And you can read about that in the scriptures. It tells that. And I can't remember where it is. 
Galatians, Corinthians, Colossians. Um, it, you, all you got to do is look up the word dead in Christ and write every scripture down that it says and then go study that for yourself. I've studied that for years. I've done the word searches on it and the Holy Ghost has taught to me about that stuff. Okay, so um, our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. All those that are predestined for salvation, that they have been crucified into Christ Jesus, they are no longer the old man, the old man is gone. The old man is dead. Behold, all things are new. Uh, he's written their name in the Lamb's Book of Life. He said, I will not blot your name out. I will not blot your name out. Why? Because you were overcomer. Because you were dressed in white raiment. You had a few names. And he said, um, he said, remember how far you received and heard and repent for if you do not watch I'm going to come on you as a thief and you will not know when I come so if he comes on you as a thief and you're naked he, he can blot your name out of the book of life okay he said so for those that overcome and that watch and repent and they're clothed in white raiment he said I am going to confess your name before my father and before the angels and then he said can you hear let him that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And I say, yes, Lord, we can hear. And for those of us that can't hear, I pray that you'll consecrate our ears to where we can hear. Okay, so let me pray for y'all. And I'm going to get back on. And I got another couple of things to upload. The next couple of things I got to do are not going to be this long. Okay, I'm sorry this one was long again. But I gave y'all a bunch of nuggets of gold. Okay, y'all just sift through all the stuff I give you shelf what you don't need pray on the things you have questions about and just believe it all things in Christ Jesus um, and he's not going to let me teach y'all anything that's not right he would deal with me on that if I do something like that then he would either have me to take that video down or he would have me to get on and apologize to y'all if I say something that's wrong so all these things I said to y'all these are spiritually discerned if you don't understand it all just believeth all things in Christ Jesus and go and read the word for yourself and say, Lord, establish this word to me. If this is true, I've been believing something opposite. I've been believing I was going to just fly away. I, I didn't know you were coming to make visitation with us. Uh, there's several scriptures in uh, where he talks about he's going to come. Uh, to visit with us and he's going to come on us like a thief and things like that and we didn't understand what it meant we just thought he's going to take us away which he can take you away now i'm not saying he can't if he wants to he can but for right now what he showed me he was going to come and strengthen me is what he, he gave me a word so i saw that he showed me the sign of some man he sent a man uh coming with the cloud of witness and he, he went through the earth with his glory and he came over and he hugged me and he looked at me face to face and he said i will come back i'm going to come back and i'm, I'm going to come to you i'm coming back and i'm going to strengthen you and i said okay lord I'll, and i'll be right here waiting he's like okay so he just told me that on the 18th so he's supposed to be making his rounds so y'all get ready all right, Father, right now I gave them the best that I know how to do. I pray, Lord, that you'll consecrate it to the righteous and to the holy, to their hearing. I pray you'll get them ready. I pray that they, too, like Sardis, will repent and they will remember the things that you have taught them and that they will be able to hearken and hold on to it. And I pray, Lord, that they will uh, be clothed in white raiment, that they will overcome, and I pray you'll not blot their name out of the book of life. In Jesus' mighty name I pray and I ask these things. And I pray that you help them to get ready so they can receive their visitation. And so they will watch and pray and be working, watching, and waiting. And so Jesus can come and make his visitation with them and they are going to be ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a good day. Bye. I love you.